We love you, Father. We thank you. We honor you. Father, we've come in faith tonight, Lord. And we've come with humility. And we're hungry for more of you tonight, Father. We open up our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us, Father. We thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. But, Father, we are looking towards the future. And we are inclining our ear to hear what you are saying. And we thank you, Father, that we'll be found in a place where you're, we're hearing your voice and we're stepping out and we're doing the things that you would have us to do. We honor you tonight. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. It's great to see all of you. Let's just pray together uh, uh, tonight one more time. Let's be in agreement, okay? Uh, well, I got an update on Linda's sister's house. It's Becky and Frank, correct? Linda's sister, Becky, and her husband, Frank. So they got out safe. Their dogs got out safe, but it looks like their house is completely burned, right? And so we're just going to believe for favor with the insurance company and all that kind of thing and, and that people will come alongside and we'll just believe that what the devil has meant for harm, God will turn it around and use it for good. Amen. Father, we do lift up Becky and Frank to you again, Father. We just come into agreement tonight that what the devil has meant for harm, my Father, you would turn it around and somehow, some way, use it for good. Give them favor with the insurance company. We thank you, Lord. People will come alongside and help them and provide some relief for them. And, and then you just take care of all the different details I can only imagine that, uh, that will need to be taken care of. We thank you that they're safe, their puppies are safe, and we just ask you to bless them tonight and, and, and minister peace in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Before you're seated, let's say our confession tonight. It's so good to see all of you. Welcome those of you watching online tonight. Here we go. I am here on purpose because I have a purpose. My heart is open. My mind is ready to receive because God is not finished with me yet. My best days are right in front of me and I have victory in my life because Jesus lives in me. Amen. It is good to see all of you. So before you're seated, we got to practice smiling, okay? Four of you are smiling at me and that's not enough. So let's all smile on the count of three. One, two, three. Very good. Good job. Okay. Tell the person next to you a good word and you can be seated. Amen, amen. The Lord always has a refreshing for us, amen. Every time we get together and we come in faith with humility, the Holy Spirit will be present to minister a refreshing for us so that we can be strengthened to get up and fight another day, amen. So the Lord has a refreshing for us tonight because we've come in faith and we've come in humility, wanting more of him, amen. It is wonderful to see all of you tonight. Amen. I feel that the Lord honors that. I was you know, been talking to the Lord about anointing during services. And I felt like the Lord told me that it's there's two things. It's faith and humility. If we come in faith with expectation, with hearts of expectation, expecting to receive from him and having a heart that's hungry and knowing he's going to minister to us and then coming in humility and not making it all about ourselves, but just yielding ourselves to him and not acting like we already know everything and God minister to me. I need more of you. Amen. That's it. Faith and humility. Amen. <clears throat> you are a spirit. That's the real you. You have a mind and you live in a body. The world is completely focused on external appearance, but the real you, the real me is our spirit. Amen. You are a spirit. You have a mind and you live in a body. Our spirit is the part of us that's made in the image of the creator of the universe. Amen. Made in his image at the very beginning, Genesis 1, 26. He said, let us make man in our own image. It said, in the image of man, he created them. Male and female, he created them in his image. Like we took a quarter and put, put it into silly putty. Amen. Our spirit man made in his very image. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 says, the spirit of man 
is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. This is the King James. All the inward parts of the belly. <laughs> the New American uh, Version said, The spirit of a person is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts of his being. And the New King James says, The spirit of, the man, of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Amen? Our spirit is the candle of the Lord. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. It's been such an amazing adventure and an honor for me to be ministering on the Holy Spirit the past several weeks. And, and I know that we've talked about Matthew 3, 11 so many times, but it says, I indeed, it's, it's John the Baptist talking. He said, I indeed baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God but there's one coming after me who is greater than I am he's so much greater I'm not even worthy to uh, carry his sandals this one will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire amen the Apostle Paul came across some believers uh, in Ephesus, in Acts chapter 19, and, and he found them, and he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, we haven't even heard, heard that there's a Holy Spirit. They said, into what then were you baptized? And they said, we were baptized into John's baptism. And the Apostle Paul said, or was it Paul in, in uh, Acts? Was it Paul? Peter, I'm sorry, yeah. So Peter said, um, into what then were you baptized? And they said, we were baptized in, into John's baptism. And he said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance. But then he talked about being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and receiving the Holy Spirit. Amen? He said, so, so they said they, they were all baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. He laid his hands on them and they all received the Holy Spirit. Amen? Romans chapter 8 I'd like to read several scriptures here in, in Romans uh, chapter 8. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along. If not, no problem. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man as an offering for sin. He thus condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteous uh, standard of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh or according to the body, but according to the spirit, big S versus little s, human spirit, who do not walk according to the flesh or the body or the desires of the body, but they walk according to the spirit. The Holy Spirit, those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. The mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. You've probably found, like I have, there's just not much good that my flesh desires, right? It seems to have wrong desires at every turn. But thank God we don't have to walk in the flesh because our spirit man on the inside is made in the image of the creator, amen? And he's given us victory in the spirit, amen? And our spirit is the lamp of the Lord. And thank God for 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19. Not only is our spirit made in his image, but now we know that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Woo, it's amazing. The mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It does not to submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are controlled by the flesh cannot please God. You, however, say that's me. You, however, are not controlled by the flesh, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, say that's me. 
<laughs> and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit on the inside is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit, with a big S, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh. It's not to the body to live according to the desires of the body or the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, the big S, if by the power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive... Now, isn't this interesting, this next verse? You did not receive a spirit of fear. And that's little s. So that's our spirit on the inside, our human spirit. It's so awesome. Romans chapter 1. It, it really shows us this connection between our human spirit that's made in His image and the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, working in us in connection with our human spirit, giving us victory over this flesh. Amen? Thank you, Father. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery that returns to fear, but you received a spirit, big S, a spirit of sonship, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself, himself, the Holy Spirit himself testifies or bears witness like in a courtroom in a court like a courtroom witness that's what the Holy Spirit ministering on the inside testifying on the inside as if we would testify in court amen always telling the truth in court in front of the judge it says the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit the big S testifies with our Spirit with a little s that we are God's children, that we're part of the family, that he is our father and he'll never abandon his children. Amen. And if we are children, then we are heirs. We are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. <clears throat> if indeed we suffer with him. And someone said, well, there it is right there. Suffer. We're supposed to suffer uh, poverty and, and sickness and all this other. Nope. He's talking about suffering and temptation and sin. Those are the two areas that Jesus suffered. He suffered with temptation. Just, he said he suffered. He was tempted in every single way that you and I are tempted. And he overcame. So he knows what we go through when we're tempted with sin. And he's able to empathize and sympathize and strengthen us to overcome. Amen? If indeed we suffer with him, temptation and, and, uh, and, and overcoming so that we also may be glorified with him. Verse 26. In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how we ought to pray. Sometimes. Oftentimes, right? Not exactly sure what to pray. Right? But as we yield our human spirit to the Holy Spirit, he'll show us what to pray. He'll show us what to pray in English. He'll have us pray in the Spirit. And when we pray this way, we pray according to the perfect will of God. And he goes to work on our behalf, bringing his perfect will to pass. Amen? In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we don't know how we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit himself intercedes with us with groans too deep for words. Looking in different uh, translations, other translations say uh, words that your mind doesn't understand at the time. And he who searches our hearts knows what the knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God works all things together for the good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. The Holy Spirit, if we'll yield to him, he'll minister to you. He'll bear witness to me. He'll minister to our human spirit. He'll communicate with us. Amen. 
God's voice, the creator of the universe, communicating and talking with his people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if we'll incline our human spirit to hear his voice. Amen? Not in an audible voice, per se, perhaps, if we're fortunate enough, but always if we incline our spirit to hear the Holy Spirit, he's willing to communicate. Amen? As we hear him in our spirit, as we obey what he tells us to do, as we yield the desires of our mind, as we yield the desires of our flesh to him to do what he says, he will illuminate our path with his voice. Amen. David said in Psalm 119, 105, he said, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Isn't it awesome? He used those two words. He said, a lamp onto my feet, I can see which step to take next, and a light onto my path. Even if I can't figure it out in my mind, even if I haven't been trained in a certain way to understand the exact way to go, your word shows me. Amen? Your written word and your revealed word from the Holy Spirit ministering to my human spirit. Amen? Again, David said in Psalm 119, verse 130, he said, The entrance of your words give light, and it gives understanding to the simple. And then David's son Solomon, isn't that cool? His son Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 4, verse, what a legacy, right? <laughs> David wrote Psalms, and then his son turns around and writes Proverbs. Woo, that's amazing. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, Solomon wrote, The path of the just. And the definition of just is righteous in character and conduct. He said the path of the just is like the shining sun. It shines ever brighter onto a perfect day. The way of the wicked or the way of those who refuse to go with the spirit and obey the flesh. The way of the wicked is like darkness and they can't figure out what makes them stumble. Amen. They say that's not me. <laughs> This amazing connection of our human spirit being ministered to, being witnessed to by the Holy Spirit as he reveals to us God's word puts us on a path in life that is illuminated. It's not that there won't be challenges, obviously, right? God's favor and his blessing is on our lives it's part of the new covenant blessing, but there will be challenges we're going to face in life. But thank God when we're on his path, hearing his voice, hearing his word, he illuminates the path. Amen. And he'll give us wisdom. He'll give a supernatural breakthrough to go around the mountain, to speak through the mountain, to go over the mountain, to go through the mountain, to speak the mountain out of the way. Amen. Everybody say his word illuminates my path. John chapter 16, verse 13, when Jesus was talking about the role of the Holy Spirit in our life, he said, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Whew. We don't need to go to a fortune teller, right? We have the Holy Spirit bearing witness on the inside telling us things to come warning us don't go with that person be be careful with that relationship right telling us things to come go with that person right link arms with that person over 20 I don't want to tell you that whole story no but but Pastor Bill had a check in his spirit about some people serving a long time ago. And they were super sweet people. And I was young in the Lord, and we were developing a friendship with them. And I couldn't really figure out why Pastor Bill had a check in his spirit about them. Uh, having a small group and inviting kids over to his house. Whew. 25 years later. It turns out, Pastor Bill heard from God. Because there were things going on we don't want going on. 
thank you, Lord. Amen. He will tell you things to come. Amen. We got to obey when the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Amen. He'll always illuminate our path. He'll keep us on the right path with solid foundation. Amen. We as people certainly have the ability to mess it up. But thank God, His grace is always there for us. He'll embrace us and get us right back onto the path. And he always has that perfect will available to us, even if we make mistakes and get off the right path that he has for us. It's never too late. Amen. We can always get back on the good path that he has for us. That's illuminated. Amen. If you're watching, if you're here tonight and you feel like, you know what? I want to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And maybe you've been struggling getting clarity on what you feel like the Holy Spirit is saying. I'm not sure where I heard this. I, I might have been from our pastors, but it was go back and do the last thing that you felt the Holy Spirit minister to you and share with you because the things that God would have us to do oftentimes are in specific order so we can be in the place so things can line up for us, amen? And so if we haven't done what he told us to do before, it would be difficult for him to tell us the next thing to do because perhaps the next thing is contingent on the last thing that he told us, amen? I'm convinced that every good thing that mankind has ever found or invented or created has been at the inspiration and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is the creator. So in order for a human to create anything, we have to have inspiration from the creator himself. Amen. I'm also convinced he has so much more for each of us than we potentially think that we're capable of. Amen. I'm convinced that the most beautiful buildings have yet to be built. That the best books have yet to be written. Even though Pastor Bill has read enough books to fill Barnes and Noble, there's more awesome books to be written. Amen. The best movies have yet to be made. Is that possible? It is possible. The best movies have yet to be made. Amen. God has done some wonderful things in the past, but we're not living in the past anymore. Amen. This is the day that we are alive and we are on this earth in this community for a purpose for this time. And we are looking forward. Amen. Awesome, anointed and wonderful worship songs have yet to be written and sung. Amen. We got some good ones. We all have certain ones that we really enjoy. We have favorites, but the best ones are yet to come. The most amazing and beautiful pieces of art have yet to be created. The best technology has yet to be invented. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. The word of the Lord tonight is the spirit-led life of adventure. Amen? One idea from God can change everything for you and can change everything for me. Amen? One idea from the Holy Spirit ministering to our human spirit can change everything. It can bring breakthrough overnight and change everything. One idea from the Holy Spirit ministering to our human spirit could change everything over the next 30 years for us. It may be an idea that takes that long to manifest. Amen? But one thing's for sure. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him, and if we'll have our human spirit tuned into Him, there's no limit on how high we can fly and how far we can go. Amen? These are the days when God's people must be the dreamers. As the world continues to get further away from faith, the world perhaps will become more and more negative because positivity comes from people of faith. And you can only be positive and you can only be a person of faith if you have confidence that we have a loving heavenly father who created us. If, we, if people turn their back on him, there is no hope for humanity. Our great, 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 great grandfather's a monkey and we're just an accident if we turn our back on our Heavenly Father. Amen? 
These are the days when God's people must continue to dream. Now listen. Regardless of age. No matter age. No matter what stage of life we are in. We see powerful examples. Genesis to Revelation. All throughout the word of God doing amazing things through teenagers. Through young people. Young men, young women. We see amazing examples all throughout the word of God doing powerful things, new things. Things that changed the planet that we're still talking about today through middle-aged people. We see many examples of God using people in advanced age. Older people, right? All throughout God's word. Because the body is wasting away, but the spirit man on the inside is being renewed day by day. And the spirit man on the inside is the part that hears from the Holy Spirit and creates new things that touch people in new ways they've never been touched before. Amen? <clears throat> Age is associated with the flesh. It's associated with the body. And Paul revealed this amazing truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. The Holy Spirit ministering through Paul in the Good News Testament. It says, for this reason we never become discouraged. Even though our physical body is gradually decaying, yet our spiritual being is being renewed day after day. Woohoo! Amen. What is going on with my ankle? <laughs> right? She's like, you got to get that checked out. I'm like, I don't know what. I mean, it feels perfect right now. Right? Last night I couldn't walk. I'm not even kidding. My ankle hurts. So I don't know what's It's like a nerve is pinching or something in there. I was like, oh, my goodness. The boys are like, Dad, what is wrong with you? Nothing. I'm good. This reason we never become discouraged because even though our physical being is gradually decaying, regardless of how hard we work at it, we can work it, work it, work it, and eat healthy and exercise, and we need to do that, keep this temple healthy to run this race that God has called us to run on this earth. But even though our physical body is gradually decaying, yet our spirit man on the inside is being renewed day by day. The New King James says it this way, Therefore we do not lose heart. Even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it amazing that you can meet people, spirit-filled, on-fire people for God? I feel like your parents are younger today than they were when I first met them, you know? Because they're, all, they're completely committed to, to serving God. Amen. And they're just amazing, wonderful, spirit-filled Christian people. They love God. And so even though their outward body, they were younger than me when I met them. Woohoo! I'm getting old. So even though their outward body is decaying, they seem younger to me. Yeah? They, they have like more energy. They're more vibrant, more wise. Amen. The ERV says, this is why we never give up. Our physical body is, I hate to even read this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good thing Rodney's not here. He'd be like, I don't receive that. Our physical body is becoming older and weaker. <laughs> Rodney would not like that, would he? No. He'd be like, give me some creatine and some weights. Our physical body may be becoming older and weaker, but our spirit on the inside is made new every day. Age is just a number. Amen? Because the human spirit on the inside is not getting older. It's the candle of the Lord. It's the lamp of the Lord. Young and old, those who believe in Jesus, whose spirit man on the inside has awakened to the truth of Jesus, we're all eligible to hear from the Holy Spirit as he ministers to our spirit. Amen? No matter the age, no matter the stage of life, new ideas, new inventions, new ways of doing things to help people and to love people. Amen? The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, Pastor Pam was ministering out of this same chapter on Sunday morning. 
you know, I was thinking about this, and at the time that this was spoken through Isaiah to the children of Israel several thousand years ago, it was spoken to the children of Israel, but today we get those same promises through faith in Jesus. Under the new covenant, all the blessings and the promises for the children of Israel and for the Jewish people that we see, those amazing promises that I'm going to read that were for the children of Israel during that time, you and I, through faith in Jesus, we inherit all those promises because we come right into that spiritual bloodline. Amen? And thank God it's amazing. The book of Hebrews, it says we get even better promises under the new covenant than they had in the old covenant. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43 says, Oh now, but now, O oh Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O oh Israel, the one who formed you, says to you, Do not be afraid. I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. This is verse 10. You are my servant. You have been chosen to know me. Believe in me. Understand that I alone am God and there is no other God. There never has been and there never will be. Yes, I am the Lord and there is no other Savior. Verse 12. He said, I predicted, first I predicted your rescue. And then I proclaimed it to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. You are my witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch you out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. The Lord's promise of victory, this is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sakes, I will send an army against Babylon or against your enemies forcing them to flee in those ships that they're so proud of. I am the Lord. I am the Holy One. I am Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. Now this, he's talking about the escape, right, from slavery, from Egypt. And so he's reminding them of this amazing thing that he did for them. But then it's really interesting because then he ministers to us at the end of this. And listen what he says. I'm the Lord. I opened the way through the waters. I made a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with, with all of its chariots and its horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they all drowned. Their lives were snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. Verse 18. He said, but forget all of that. <laughs> it is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Don't you see it? I'll make a pathway in the wilderness and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Amen. All the amazing testimonies and things that God has done in our life, he says, don't focus on those things. Be grateful be thankful, but our focus cannot be behind. Our focus has to be forward with what God is doing today and tomorrow. Amen? He's doing a new thing, and he's doing it through you, and he's doing it through me. We, we got some, so Kelly and I were youth pastors for many years, and, and early on we started to get some ideas. And... Um, from other large ministries. We went to some conferences and, and uh, we got some ideas. And one idea was to have a big night every three months. Th this ministry was talking about how they had grown their student ministry to literally 2,000 kids every Wednesday. That's how many people were coming. They built this amazing facility, Church on the Move in Tulsa. And so they had this idea about a big night every three months. And so we started incorporating this in 2000, uh, it would have been 2000, early 2003. So Pastor Pam is an accountant, right, by trade. It seems so menial to call you an accountant. But she's like a... 
power-packed, full of fire, <laughs> faith, love, all wrapped into one, right? Anyway, so, but anyway, so, so I was talking to someone the other day, about, you know, we're looking at purchasing this building and so forth, and I said, you got to understand, I can show you every penny that's ever been spent by the ministry for the last 25 years. Pastor Pam has kept track of all of it. Amazing, detail-oriented, right? So anyway, so the, the point of that, sorry, can I say those things? Okay. The point of that is we, we can go back and we can look at every service we've ever had and tell you exactly how many people were there. So we get the spreadsheet, comes out to the finance committee every Monday, and we look at it, and, 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 and then we, and you can click on the tabs. I went way back T today. I went back to 2003 because um, uh, we don't want to focus on the back, on, on what happened back there. But it is a good reminder of what God can do. Amen. And so what we did, we started having these big nights in, in 2003. And one was very spiritual. We had a hot dog eating contest. And, uh, and, and we did it. If you've ever watched the, uh, the July 4th hot, hot dog eating contest, Nathan's famous hot dogs, and that how gifted is that guy that introduces everybody, right? Have you all seen that? On July 4th they have it. The guy is just amazing. He's super gifted the way he announces all the competitors. And so we would do that with the young people. We'd have like this bumping music playing and, and then we'd announce them and all these, said all these funny things. Long story short, okay, we started doing this. And so what would happen is you'd, if you were maybe had 30 kids coming on Wednesday, maybe on the big night you'd have 60 kids come. And then, and then maybe 10 of those kids would stick around. But what happens is over time, it really started exploding. And, and so I was looking back at what God had done. And uh, on October 29th, 2003, listen to this. We, there were so many kids coming to this relatively small area, two storefronts over, that we had to go to two nights. We had 162 middle school students come on a Wednesday, and then 39 high school students came on Thursday. It was amazing. Awesome, right? So... But God says, you know, when he's talking to the children of Israel, man, I led you out from slavery. You were there, you were slaves, and I drowned your enemies under the ground. He said, but forget about all that. Nothing compares to what I'm going to do. Isn't that awesome? We have this amazing trail of testimonies of what God has done in your life, what he's done in my life. And, and we don't want to minimize those things, but we're looking forward. Amen? I was uh, looking at my journal today from that same time to see what God had been speaking to me at that time. And in February 2004, I took a photocopy. At that time, it was cassette tapes. <laughs> I am old, right? It was cassette tapes that ministries would send out. And Pastor Billy Joe Doherty, sent his, his monthly teaching that month was, The Harvest Is Now. It was February 2004. And so I actually took a photocopy of that cassette and I taped it in my journal. And I said, yes, Lord, the harvest is now. And then I looked back at the end of the year. I wrote down everything. And then the Lord started speaking to me as well and confirming that it was going to be a time of harvest in our life. And, and so I looked back at what God did and we're still, 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 still reaping the benefits today in 2021 of what God did for our family in 2004, specifically July of 2004. Amen. And it had to do with some different pieces of real estate that God supernaturally, I'm just still amazed that, that he opened the door and allow us to get these properties. And he did it all in 2004. And we had this nice, tidy little family of two boys and one girl in 2004. And we said, hey, let's try to have another girl. We'll have two boys and two girls. That'd be cool. And then we had two more boys. Amen. <laughs> Explosion. Harvest has come. Amen. He said, forget all that. Nothing, it's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun to do it. Can't you see it? I'll make a pathway for you through the wilderness, and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. All the wonderful things that the Lord has done for you and I in the past, he's doing a new thing today, and we're alive today. 
We're alive today on this earth for a purpose. So today, let's embrace today and live it as if it were our last. Amen? God has a word for you and he has a word for me to illuminate our path to get us where he wants us to be. Amen? When I was younger, I had not heard much teaching on the fact that I was a spirit and that I was filled with the spirit and that I could actually hear the spirit. But as I look back, when I was a younger person, there were some key words that some people spoke to me and they were powerful enough. I still remember them today. May of 1991, I was a senior in college at Anderson University and I was in the science building and a friend of mine, David Troutman, I said, David, okay, so all my friends had were lining up jobs, and graduation was in two weeks, and I wasn't worried about it. I didn't worry about anything back then, but I still didn't know where I was going and what I was going to do, right? My mom was curious what I was going to do, but I wasn't really concerned about it, but I still would have liked to know what was going to happen with my life because all my friends had good jobs lined up. I saw David Troutman in the hallway of the science building at Anderson University, and I said, David, what's the good word? Now today, if I say, what's the good word? It really means something to me, like when I'm speaking those words. What is the good word? I want to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. Amen? Back then, I was just saying stuff, right? I was a college kid. Dave Troutman, what's the good word? And he said, Danny Peter, Jeremiah 2911. That's the good word for you. I had never read Jeremiah 29, 11 at that point in my life. I went home and I read it, and you know what it says. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord. That's a powerful statement. I think anytime God says declares the Lord, we've got to like perk up and listen, right? I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. What kind of plans? Plans for prosperity and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. That's a promise for you and it's a promise for me. I wasn't looking for a word from the Lord that day. But it was powerful enough. And, and I don't know if he meant for it to be spirit led. But it was a prophecy over my life. And he spoke it. Amen. He said Jeremiah 29 11. Within days after that, I had an offer from INB National Bank in Lafayette, Indiana, and I moved here. Uh, 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 well, I graduated a month later, moved here shortly thereafter, met this pretty woman, and we have prospered in this place. Amen? And it's been because of the Lord. But forget all that, because it's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun to do it. Don't you see it? I'll make a pathway for you through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. 2005 and 2006, we were in a, a subdivision in a house. And uh, it, it was a, a, a great house, but we wanted to be uh, close to town, but kind of out, you know, and, and in a remote area where the boys could pee out in the backyard and no one could see them from the road. That's the honest truth. Dad doesn't, but the boys do, right? But that was an important ingredient for finding the home we were looking for, right? <clears throat> and um, that wasn't in my notes, actually. <laughs> That's right. So we're like three minutes from Lowe's, but you can actually pee in the front yard. No one will see you, right? We are in 10 acres of woods, right? So we had looked at uh, a, a lot of different properties over a couple year period of time, and I don't do that, so stop thinking. <laughs> we had looked at a lot of different properties over a couple year period, and nothing had really stuck. We had made, you know, Kelly's parents had come with us and looked at some different properties. One morning, got a call from a local realtor. He said, Dan, I got a piece of property. I think you uh, might like it. Someone else had purchased it. Uh, it's, it. It's in this small subdivision, but it's 10 acres of woods, and it's it's close to town, but it's it feels like it's remote. And, and I said, great. So I drove out there, and immediately I was like, oh, yeah, this is the property. Yes, thank you, Lord. So we looked at it. We felt great about it, but it was uh, because of the cost of the land, and it was probably too much and more than we should have done or could have done but I went back that night and I was walking around those woods 
And I asked the Lord if that was the property for us. And the Lord spoke the big spirit, Holy Spirit, big S I mean, Holy Spirit spoke to my human spirit. And he said, your kids, and he showed me this area, this will be the backyard. And your kids are going to play ball on, in this area. And I can't tell you the hours and hours and hours and hours those five kids have played ball in that exact area. Amen? But forget about all that because nothing is compared to what I am going to do for you. I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I'll make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Amen? Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now to God who is able to do so much more than all we can even ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory to the church, uh, in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Regardless of age, regardless of what stage we're at in life, God wants to do a new thing. Because even though our bodies are getting older, our spirit, man, on the inside, if we're still breathing, we're still alive, our spirit is the candle of the Lord, and God has things for us to do today and tomorrow. Amen? He's got new things to do. New things. Isn't it amazing that God puts it on Pastor Bill's heart to start a ministry to rescue children that have no parents halfway around the world in the South Sudan. How is it possible that Pastor Bill can somehow orchestrate this and create a ministry and connect with a local anointed pastor and they build this ministry and all these children have been rescued and fed and clothed and trained and helped. The things that a parent would do for them, they had no parents. No one was there to rescue them. God put it on his heart. He obeyed. Look what the Lord has done. He wants to do something similar through you and through me. It's our time. Amen. Or turn to the person next to you and say, it's my time. <laughs> Tell them God is doing something new. Someone would say, well, there's thousands. There's thousands of those children that have no parents. And how can you even begin to make a dent? Oh, they're making a dent. Because it, it mattered for, for the ones who are being ministered to and rescued. Amen. And each one is significant. Not one of us is more special than another of us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Four keys, just real briefly, and we'll wrap it up with this. Four keys to this spirit-led life of adventure. Number one, stay in the word and stay on the word. Amen? Don't get weird. Stay in the word and stay on the word. People who start going after the spirit but get off the word, they get weird, right? So that's not us. Stay on the word and he'll make us relevant to reach people. Amen? Thank you, Lord. God's word is God's will. It's the foundation for our lives. And the entrance of God's word brings light and it illuminates what God wants to do in us and through us. Second key, be quiet and listen. Message for me, I'm always moving. <laughs> always moving. Be quiet and listen. Stop moving. Stop running. Turn the TV off. Turn the devices off. Get away by yourself. Talk to God. Write down your prayers, listen to God's voice, and write down what God speaks to you. Amen? There's something significant about when we write it down, what we feel that the Holy Spirit is speaking to our spirit. We can hear it, we don't have to write it down, but there's something very significant about when we write it down. Amen? Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That way you'll be able to prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The third key, be strong and courageous and step out in faith. Amen. Be strong and courageous and step out in faith. If God has spoken it to you, he can absolutely positively do it through you. Am I sure it's God? Step out in faith. He's got us covered. Amen? Step out in faith. If you feel that you have heard the Holy Spirit in your human spirit, step out in faith and, the, and God will have us covered.
Amen? He'll cover us. He'll take care of it. He always does. Number four, live your life as if you only have one life to live. Amen? Kelly's mom has a, uh, forgot my sweat rag today, sorry. Kelly's mom has a plaque over her kitchen sink, and it's been there since my first trip to Kelly's house in Kokomo when I was an hour late on our blind date, and she still married me. There's a plaque over Kelly's mom's uh, in their kitchen, and, and, um, and it says this, only one life, it'll soon be passed. Only what's done for Jesus will last. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's all pray tonight. So those four keys again. Stay in the word. Be quiet and listen. Be strong and courageous and step out in faith. And live your life as if you only have one life to live. Lord, we thank you for this encouraging word that you are doing a new thing. We are open to it, Father. And we pray that we would have ears to hear and eyes to see what you are saying, my Father, and that we would be quick to obey. All across the room tonight, if you're here tonight and you'd say, Pastors, would you pray for me? We're so glad that every one of you are here. We're so happy for those of you that are watching tonight. And um, we just want to make sure that you are in fellowship with our Heavenly Father. And so if, if you're here tonight and you'd say, my life is not right. I am on the wrong path. I've gotten off the path that God has for me. Well, I think that's why you're here tonight. God has you here for that reason, to get back on the wonderful path that he has for you. And so we want to pray with you tonight. So all across the room, if you're here tonight and you say, my life is not right, I've gotten on the wrong path, but I want to get on the right path tonight. We want to pray with you. We want to lead you in prayer tonight. And uh, we'll put the past in the past, and get on the right path, and it's a bright future. All across the room, those of you watching online, if that's you tonight, could you slip your hand up in the air and I'm gonna have you stay right where you're at and we're gonna, just gonna pray with you tonight. Anybody here tonight? Say, that's, that's me, would you pray for me? Let's all pray this prayer together. Say, Father God, thank you so much for your amazing love for me. I have sinned, I've made mistakes, but tonight I ask for your forgiveness. I place my faith in Jesus and I make Jesus Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord. You baptize me in the Holy Spirit and with fire in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's all stand up tonight. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Let's go out with a powerful confession. Amen. My spirit is the candle of the Lord. And I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I follow the Holy Spirit. And my mind is renewed. My flesh is put under, and God's living word illuminates my path. I love Jesus. My future is bright. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of the week. See you all Sunday morning.